Cade outside the hospital where he's being treated for COVID-19. The US president says he's learned a lot about the virus and now understands it. Mr Trump's doctors hope they can discharge him in a day. He's also being treated with a steroid that's only recommended in severe cases. Our correspondent David Lipson is outside the Walter Reed Medical Centre. Even COVID-19 can't keep Donald Trump away from his fans. His motorcade drove out of hospital, a masked president inside, along with his security detail. God bless our president. I will die for him. I will die for that man. Waving to jubilant supporters as he rolled down the road and back into the Walter Reed facility. Well, that is true to form Donald Trump and probably the best sign that he's doing quite well, a drive-by for all of his fans gathered here outside the hospital. Minutes earlier, he posted this video from inside the presidential suite. We have enthusiasm like probably nobody's ever had. Our people that love the job we're doing, we have more enthusiasm than maybe anybody. And suggested he's only now getting a full understanding of the virus that's killed 210,000 of his countrymen. It's been a very interesting journey. I learned a lot about COVID. I learned it by really going to school. This is the real school. This isn't the let's read the book school, and I get it, and I understand it. Despite the display of strength, it's becoming clear this isn't a mild case of COVID-19. The president's doctors have revealed they're trying out a third treatment in as many days. Over the course of his illness, the president has experienced two episodes of transient drops in his oxygen saturation. The latest drug is dexamethasone, a common steroid that's meant to reduce inflammation of the lungs and calm the body's immune response. The World Health Organization advises its use for COVID-19 should be limited to severe or critical cases. His medical team won't describe the condition of the president's lungs, but they remain optimistic. If he continues to look and, and feel as well as he does today, our hope is that we can plan for a discharge as early as tomorrow to the White House where he can continue his treatment course. There was also an attempt to clean up yesterday's chicanery, Doctors revealing their claim the president hadn't been given oxygen the previous day was untrue. I was trying to reflect the, the, uh, the upbeat attitude that the team, the president, that his course of illness has had. When you're treating a patient, you want to project confidence, you want to lift their spirits, and that was his intent. This is the hospital suite where the president is resting. He's clearly still focused on the campaign, tweeting polls that suggest his illness hasn't hurt his election chances. If he is discharged from hospital soon, these fans will be waiting for him on the campaign trail. David Lipson, ABC News, Maryland. Restrictions are being lifted in Auckland to bring the city in line with the rest of New Zealand. From Thursday, the city will move to alert level one, meaning there'll be no 100-person limit on gatherings and no physical distancing rules in bars or restaurants. There have been no new community cases reported in Auckland for 10 consecutive days. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is confident the second wave of infections has almost been eliminated. There's been a major spike in coronavirus cases in the UK with 23,000 infections reported in the past day. Reporter Nick Dole has more from London. There are two main reasons for this huge spike. One of them is the, the natural rise in infections in the UK, but the other reason we're told is a technical fault. So on Friday, the cases were around 7,000. On, uh, on Saturday, they shot up to 13,000. And uh, yeah, we've just got those Sunday figures through 23,000. We're told the reason for that is that due to some sort of a technical computer issue, some of the cases that should have been counted in previous days uh, weren't. And so now they're being tacked on to today's totals. Um, but, you know, there is an, a very clear trend uh, of this virus spreading. That's despite all the new restrictions. There's a, a curfew on bars and restaurants at 10 p.m. There's a rule that says that people can't uh, socialise in groups of more than six. Despite that, the, the numbers are rising. And the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, says, I know, he says, I know you're frustrated. I know you're furious with the government, but you have to stay the course. Uh, this government has been criticised for its uh, problems, particularly with uh, the test and trace system, which critics say 
simply isn't working like it should. And also for mixed messaging. And the Prime Minister was uh, trying out a new kind of message on television uh, over the weekend. What we want people to do is to uh, behave fearlessly but with common sense, fearlessly but with common sense, to follow the, the guidance, whether national or, or local. But, you know, I've got to tell you, in all candour, it's going to continue to be bumpy through to Christmas. He was diagnosed with COVID-19 back in March. Uh, and since then, some of his colleagues have been saying privately that he's essentially not performing like he used to. He's not the same man that he once was. He addressed that criticism today. He says, well, yeah, maybe I don't have a spring in my step like I once did, but there's a good reason for that. That's because tens of thousands of Britons have died and we're facing a national crisis. So he says that um, he's generally feeling well. Of course, this nearly killed him. Uh, he, he, he was in intensive care. He says that the whole experience made him realise that he was, quote, too fat. Uh, but he says, uh, in his words, that he's uh, as fit as several butchers' dogs. So uh, I think we can take that to mean that he, he's fighting fit and uh, he'll certainly need his strength. Uh, 23,000 cases reported today. He's got a, a big task ahead of him. Mm. Azerbaijan says its second largest city, Ganja, has been hit by Armenian missiles as tensions continue to grow between the two countries. Azerbaijan officials say the missiles were launched into residential areas, but Armenia has denied responsibility for the attacks. It's believed that at least one civilian was killed. Dozens of others were injured. The hostilities are part of a decades-long dispute over the nagorno Karabakh region, with both countries claiming the area as their own. Regional leaders are warning that citizens of major cities in Azerbaijan should leave because there could be future attacks. At least five people have been killed and up to 20 are missing after a storm lashed southeast France and northwest Italy. More than half a metre of rain was dumped in 24 hours, washing away homes, roads and bridges and swamping some towns with mud. The military has been deployed to search for survivors, with many victims thought to have been swept down the coast away from France. Voters in New Caledonia have chosen to remain a French colony in a referendum on the country's independence. Early results show that more than 53% of people voted no to the independence proposal. There was a higher than expected turnout at polling booths across the country, with some people waiting up to an hour to cast their vote. It is the second independence referendum in the country in two years. The vote was part of a deal three decades ago to end a bloody conflict between the indigenous Kanak populations and people of French descent. To the day's finance news now with David Chow. And David, it does look like the market is having a pretty strong day despite the public holiday in several states. Yeah, that's right, Kirsten. So it's a strong day for the market and half the country is enjoying the sun right now, very envious of them. And uh, the number of shares being traded right now is about a third of what it was uh, compared to Friday. So it is a very quiet day. And uh, Australian markets are the best performers today, definitely compared to uh, you know, New Zealand, Hong Kong and all the others. Uh, now, there are a few things boosting the market. On the international front, I guess there's speculation about how well is Donald Trump going in terms of his recovery. So there he is uh, doing a political stunt, waving at his supporters from outside hospital. Uh, so uh, investors, I guess, have focused on the positive today as opposed to last Friday when, uh, you know, they were spooked by the uncertainty. So uh, I guess that's uh, boosted the market. Uh, the consensus, the general feeling he's recovering. And also on the local front, uh, Victoria and uh, New South Wales have recorded very low coronavirus cases. And then there's that budget splash tomorrow. So more stimulus is expected and that's expected to be good for stock markets as it's traditionally been. So NAB has prepared this graph here. So... Uh, Basically, it shows the government's cash balance versus economic output or GDP. And you can see that the estimate is about 11.3% or $220 billion, the deficit for the current financial year, much bigger than the previous years. And uh, the consensus is uh, it will be much bigger than, um, you know, the biggest budget deficit since World War II, dating back to the 1940s. So uh, with the uh, expectation of stimulus, that's boosted the market today. So let's take a look at how our market's going right now. The All Lords and the ASX 200 are up around 135 points. So that is up about 2.4%. So it's consistently stayed at this level since the day began. Uh, every sector is trading higher, especially financial and energy stocks. 
And the market's also uh, getting a boost ahead of tomorrow's big day. That's when the government will announce its budget, those stimulus measures, and the Reserve Bank will decide on interest rates as well. But no rate cut is expected. Now, practically everything is doing well on the ASX today, from airlines, banks, construction firms, and oil and gas companies. Only seven out of 200 stocks are in the red, like cloud computing company Megaport. Now, Asia markets have picked up in the last hour or two. Uh, New Zealand up by a third of 1%. Hong Kong and Tokyo up about 1.5%. Uh, uh, so they're up, but not as good as Australian markets today. And on Wall Street, on the other hand, it was rattled by the uncertainty, in particular the news of Donald Trump catching the coronavirus and the rising odds of Joe Biden winning next month's presidential election, according to the latest opinion polls. So the Dow Jones slipped by half a percent, the S&P lost one percent, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq had a steep fall, down more than two percent. Now, the Australian dollar has continued to rise in the last few hours. It's buying almost 71.9 US cents. And when we take a look at commodities, oil prices uh, had a pretty big fall over the weekend. Uh, West Texas crude down to about 36.9 US per barrel. Uh, gold has also slipped a bit. It's down to about 1,898 US dollars per ounce. And Kirsten, that's the latest in finance news. Thanks, David. A group of Indigenous women from North East Arnhem Land say it's time stories about women's wisdom of country were told in their own words.